and then obviously put your EDP on the back. That's what I would do. Um, I didn't understand two words there. You said you would take the uh, copy and do what? Burst? I would I would take the original and get a color copy of the same size paper as my ecclesiastical deed. Yeah. And I would use that as the public side of okay. the document I'm sending. Okay? Yes, I understand now. Thank you so much for your time. No, 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 no. It's fine. Good luck. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you, Francis. Okay. All right, Frank, uh, questions from the chat real quick. Uh, is Eucadia a republic or a democracy or something else? That's a great question. <laughs> uh, uh, republic is a form of uh, fascist um, power. Uh, fascist is in terms of Rome, fasces. Um, democracy um, comes from uh, uh, demonis, uh, kratis. So uh, it, it comes from um, effectively um, being under the yoke of um, a model that was created by the Jesuits. So we don't subscribe to either where there is a corruption in both. I would say the form, the form of, of community is um, synergism uh, as opposed to arguing is it, dem is it democratic, is it capitalistic, is it communistic, is it socialistic? It's not. It's synergistic, using the word synergy. In other words, um, on the merits of ideas that carry valuable knowledge in how to conduct a society, we make no ideological um, restriction on ideas, good or bad, purely on some precondition of uh, viewing the world like chessboards. So synergism takes, for example, the symbols of a republic but approaches the uh, law from a synergistic model that is probably more akin to um, a more social model but then adopts the pragmatism of capitalism in terms of people's ability to own property and uh, uh, trade but then has a transparency the likes of which I have found no model provides so really there is no way of saying Eucadia and the law is capitalistic communistic socialistic democratic or otherwise because in every one of those as it was deliberately designed they don't allow you normally which sounds incredible I mean someone's saying you don't allow to you're not allowed to they don't allow you to pick the best ideas of each system and see it come together, which to me is the hallmark of insanity. So I hope that answers the question. That's the honest answer. Right, so basically it's a community level free enterprise and capitalism rolled into one. Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you, Frank. Uh, could you uh, expand a little bit on how uh, things are going across the globe with success on the EDP? and also share uh, if you have any success on getting the foreign EIN on Australia or elsewhere? Um, the EIN is a problem for everybody. So if you think the problems for getting an EIN in America is difficult, I can uh, share a story of a fellow in the UK that was given five fax numbers by the IRS directly as options to send, and every single one of them was a wrong number. Now that just shows um, the, the level of gamesmanship that the IRS is playing. Uh, so the EIN issue of dishonour is a problem for everybody at the moment. Um, as to the ecclesiastical deed, everyone is pretty much in the same boat. Uh, they are following the process at a level where there should be honour by the officials and there's not and it's going up the line, but no one yet has found, um, no, no one has reached the golden mile yet of saying, uh, they've given me the paperwork, they've collapsed the trust, and uh, I've been you know, given an apology. But then again, we haven't been targeting the keeper of the roles yet because we've been building the dishonour. Um, my, my hope and my goal 
is that people are in a position to start seeing completed remedy within the next 60 or so days, uh, 90 or so days, um, either by people waking up or by clean out, which will force the bridge trials to start complying when they see their numbers being kicked, kicked out of work or charged, or, or simply, quite, quite frankly, by the writs that are issued at the highest level. But this is not going to be a prolonged process for longer than six, six months, seven months. Uh, I'm sorry it's frustrating. As I said, I would, I, would, I would have hoped that they would have recognised clearly what it is, but so far everyone's in the same boat. All right, thank you for that, Frank. Uh, next question. If you are sending a deep poll for a baby to the registrar, is it the blood of the baby and the baby's thumbprint on the EDP, or is it the uh, live parent trustees that should be on there? Um, the parents, because the parents are evoking their right as a guardian. So really, what you want, what you want, I, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't harm the baby in any way. I know you're not harming it if you're just giving the baby pinprick, but I would not require the baby at all to be the one that is signing. Um, the patriarchal right of the parents should be that the parents have the right to be the guardians of the child. We know that they've tricked the parents into giving the baby away and then claiming the baby is their property. So inside that seven years. Um, the other option, of course, and now the young parents have another, another option, which is if they've set up the trusts, simply hand the trusteeship of the trust of the baby to the parents. So that's an equally bigger, bigger problem for them. So either, the, either they collapse the trust or they hand them across. Now, if they refuse to hand them across, this is a new kind of dishonour that we haven't discussed. But boy, enslaving a baby, denying the parents the right to, to uh, administer as the trustees with no evidence of dishonour, that that's to the core of their system. One example of that dishonour being perfected shuts the whole worldwide system down as wholly abhorrent to the rules of the divine and the rule of law. So I, I, what I'd say is let us think about the ways that we can help parents on this, but I would encourage all newborn parents to, to seek to have their children uh, either removed from the role by the parents evoking their, their, their own rights or simply stating that the parents have every right to administer the trust on behalf of the baby, not the state. It is their baby after all. Uh, and we'll, we'll have to come back with some options on how to do that. Yes, all right. Thank you very much, Frank. All right, back to the callers. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, uh, waiting again. Are you there, waiting again? Hello, waiting right again. Are you there? Uh, yeah. Right uh, uh, Hi. There you are. <laughs> Uh, just uh, one comment on a fellow that uh, called in earlier about the fingerprint and, and the blood, or the thumbprint. Um, I don't see any reason he should be giving his DNA to any government organization, is the comment. And um, the question I have is about um, A for V, if you can answer a question on that. Except for value. Okay. Well, let me let me. I want to comment on your first point, if you don't mind. Okay. Right. Every ninety-nine point nine nine percent of documents through their system are dead. They're dead. That's why they use them in writing in black. That means they have no spiritual value whatsoever. They can be signed. They can be sealed. They can be stamped. They can be embossed, and all that. It's all meaningless. Uh, in their system, the highest form of document, technically, is the papal bull. Because under Roman law, the Roman cult claims that there is no higher document on a papal bull. Now we get to the question of why. Why is a papal bull regarded as the highest form of document? And on the site one-evil.org, although we haven't spoken about it for a while, the reason that it is the highest form of document is that the, the Roman cult would continue the tradition of sorcery that the um, Menashe did 
by actually sacrificing children to take their skin and using it as parchment. That is the meaning of parchment. That is the original meaning of parchment and vellum. You go and see the, the, the definition of vellum is skin. The definition of parchment is skin. If you go to the site and have a look, it will show you that the instructions for this are actually written in documents issued by the Vatican when they issued the grimoires of various popes. The instruction of creating parchment. Okay? Now, with that in mind, that means that a document written on skin presumably has the spirit of the child attached to it and the skin representing flesh. So spirit and flesh bound on a document is what they're claiming. So we, now, recognising that piece of magic, return the magic to them, mirror the magic to them. Remember, we want to prove that the system is wholly in dishonour with itself. There is not a single redeeming quality to it and the system is coming to an end. So what do we do? As much as I don't want anyone to uh, injure themselves, I don't want anyone to injure we infuse our blood on a piece of paper there by bringing physical life to it, equal in one sense to a papal bull, superior in another sense because a conscious spirit through free will does this, not by involuntary murder, but by our free will, we spill our blood and seal with our thumbprint and thus create a document greater in importance than a papal bull. Therefore, when such documents are dishonoured in their system, the entire system is in dishonour. So that's the argument. And the other short argument is they already have your DNA. All right? If they want your DNA, they'll get your DNA. So please. Uh, the, the, the second point, um, seeing I went on my, <laughs> I went on my high horse, <laughs> I've had to now remember the second part, which was your actual question. Um, I am terribly sorry. I, I went on that that point, and I I've completely missed the second part, which which was, gives you every right to uh, to ask me again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was for it was about uh, A for V. Um, oh yeah, thank you. And and I'm, uh, by the way, I wasn't having a go at you. Okay, so don't okay. worry. I, I appreciate the question. Okay. Okay. So the A for V question is. Um, can people in Canada send our A for V's to the IRS because okay. ultimately the money from the IRS and the CRA end up at the IMF anyway? Yeah, okay. Well, let me let me answer the, the acceptance of value. Okay. I don't call it acceptance of value. I call it uh, set-off. I know it's a different word. It, it, I know it could be claimed to mean the same thing, but I, I use it different because A for V unfortunately has a number of behaviours in it that actually is imperfecting or dishonouring the process of a proper set-off. Okay. All right? So there is going to be processes of set-off that we will show people when they are continuing to dishonour their own system. We have put in the claim of right, which is the divine right, which is the EDP. And in the interim from perfecting remedy where they acknowledge that we are no longer their slaves, between that time and the mountain of demands, stresses and bills they're sending, the set-off process will be put in place. Now, if they want to pursue you on a perfected set-off after you have shown a ecclesiastical deed, the argument will be, uh, yes, A for V is accepted for value. Uh, and we're not using acceptance for value because, as I say, there are a number of imperfections in how people are doing that, and I don't want to. I don't want to make that uh, the concept. There's nothing wrong with the concept. It's just it's executed badly. Um, if any agency pursues you after a set off, they have a hard time because it will be evoked by the law of necessity. In other words, if they're pursuing a tax matter. Uh, on your fiction, which they're claiming, which is theirs, they're claiming, you've already shown that you're no longer surety, but it's necessity. They don't permit you to operate in your trust. Then, of course, um, you can do a set-off, and that's their problem, right? Because technically you can set everything off. But if right. they allowed you in honour to operate in your trust, 
then of course you would be liable for any of the uh, costs and incurrences 